Hi hey guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So you're back with technically it's a vein commentary guide. And yes, this is my third vein video in recent times. But this game is a banger. Like we had we fell behind big time. Like as you guys can see from the thumbnail, by four minutes, Akali has four kills and an assist. And in the early game, I go zero and three. So this is definitely gonna be a very uh, entertaining game to say the least. So um, of course, you know, I'm starting to veer away from just posting gameplays where it's just me and my team stomping on the enemy team. Of course, th these kind of gameplays are exciting as well. And of course, I can also mention about how, you know, like the Ezreal one where, where my team was throwing, the Ziggs one where, you know, it was just... It just didn't go well for my team. And now this one. So th these are kind of more entertaining games because they are very close. But, in, you know, in this one, I'm going to be using Vayne. So, of course, um, I have already made a Vayne complete guide. So, if you guys want to check it out, um, you know, I'll leave it up in the cards above as usual. And in this game, as you guys can see by the enemy team composition, there's a Garen and a Blitzcrank and a Shivana. Uh, three uh, relatively tanky champions. Like, Garen is very tanky. Blitzcrank and Shivana are relatively tanky. So, I thought Vayne was a good pick into the team. But another thing about it is that their main form of damage is Corky and Akali. So uh, Blitzcrank uh, and Shivana they don't do too much. Garen doesn't do too much as well, of course, aside from his Execute Ultimate. So they're mainly um, AP damage sources. So I will be actually going for the Wits and Vein build in this video yet again. So I have also very, very recently, like just a couple of days ago, gone for uh, made a video on the Wits and Vein. So I will also leave that up in the cards for you guys to check out if you guys want to, where I go into a very much more in-depth explanation about why we are building Wits End in the build. And of course the complete guy where I just go in-depth into Vayne in general. So in this one I'm just going to mainly be commenting over the games because really anything about Vayne I've kind of already covered it. So yeah. Alright, so now in the laning phase, we're up against a Blitzcrank and a Corky. Now, this isn't the best um, matchup for us because Corky, of course, he has a lot of poke. Um, and he also has that Gatling gun, as you can see. So with my low range, to actually get in range to attack him, I'm going to be eating his entire Gatling gun, which will shred my defenses. So it's a horrible laning matchup into the Corky. Uh, into the Blitzcrank, it's alright. As long as I don't get hooked, I'm fine, which is really the case for any champion against a Blitzcrank. But uh, you guys will see that I do actually end up getting hooked a, a couple of times. And here, Irela already picks up her first kill, so that is uh, not good for the team. I mean, we all know Irela gets up to 4 kills in 4 minutes, so it really isn't a surprise here. Um, yeah. Good tip when facing a Blitzcrank is to work the enemy's bush like you guys see here because the Blitzcrank loves to stand in the bush there. So here I, I already get hooked by the Blitzcrank and it, honestly it's a very predictable hook so that really is my fault. Get shredded by the Corky as well but thankfully we actually come out of it relatively healthy. Could have been way worse um, if you know the Corky was someone with more damage like maybe a Lucian or a Draven. Probably would have died to them especially since Vayne in the early game you know pretty pretty weak dodging that hook there. Something um, really uh, you should know about Blitzcrank players, there really are two types. The kind who will throw out a hook at every opportunity, which is the kind that we're facing now. And the kind that will hold on to their hook until they have a very um, easy hook or they believe they can hit the hook. So it's way easier playing against the first type than the second type because when he uses his hook, you have like a 10 second or so window that you know he doesn't have hook so you can you don't have to play safe whereas the other type that hold their hook it's really irritating to play against them because there's always the threat of the hook and that is definitely the better way to be playing Blitzcrank so regardless um, it's not going too well for our team um, at the at the very beginning um, Akali already 2-0-1 um, at 3 minutes now we've just hit the 4th minute we all know what's gonna happen here she has her first item completed already which is her Hextech Gunblade, and we're all going to collapse in onto the dragon fight now. I uh, Riven clearly wants to contest the dragon. Akali uh, has rotated down before um, the uh, Ari and I, and Blitzcrank hits an absolute max range hook on me, and I'm just eliminated from the fight, unfortunately. Riven decides to instead of run away, go in 1v3, and pings uh, on my way like she wants us to help her, but what can we really do when she just goes in like 1v3? So... Uh, she's gone, I'm gone, and Akali has hit 4-0-1 at about 4 minutes and 30 seconds, and that is just absolutely horrible for my team. 
fighting into a Fed Akali, and I'm not doing too well myself. I'm 0 at 1 and 0 at the moment, but we all know it's going to become a 0 and 3 eventually. So, um, that's definitely not the best for my team. Now, something I, I actually want to kind of mention here is that my team has a lot of dissension. As I get hooked yet again, I'm going to have to blow my barrier just to not die. Um, yes, I'm horrible at dodging hooks. In case you guys didn't know, actually, um, my most hated supports are Blitzcrank and Thresh because I am personally not the best at dodging hooks. Like, I will admit that like, I really am not too good at dodging hooks. So that is something, I mean, I'm, I'm just putting it out there. I, I'm not the best at dodging hooks. Ever since I started playing Wild Rift like a year ago, I've never really been the best at dodging hooks. So I really hate playing against Blitzcrank and Thresh. Thankfully, Blitzcrank isn't really meta and Thresh... Uh, don't we don't see a lot of thresh players yet? But I do believe that eventually we'll we will see a lot of thresh players. Um, I miss the condemn into the wall. Now playing into a vein, you never want to hug your wall when you're walking back into the lane. Naturally, when you're playing against most people, you do want to do that uh, just so that there is range, uh, there is distance between you and them, so you they can't just auto attack you and punish you when coming back. But you really don't want to do that into a vein because she can punish you by condemning you into a wall. Here Blitzcrank obviously looking for a hook again, we back pick up our first item, Blade of the Rune King, as well as our boost. Blade of the Rune King will always be your first item, you never really go for anything else, because you just need all of the stats from the Blade of the Rune King, of course. And, yeah. So, um, nothing too much happening here to be honest. As a vein, you know, we just want to kind of try to play safe as much as possible, unless we can get kills. If not, we just want to play safe and play to scale for the late game in general. Riven actually comes over and she wants, obviously she wants to push. So, uh, obviously she wants to push, she gets hooked in by the Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank I would say is relatively accurate with, with his hooks, I, I guess you could say. Here, uh, Riven actually drops the Rift Herald. I don't really think that makes sense because if you look at the map here, you can see that Ari and Trindamir are actually pushing in. So if you drop the Rift Herald at mid or top, that guarantees the first target, but instead she chooses it to drop bot uh, where we are now. Of course, um, I, I, I'm I alright with it because I get more gold from the tower playing, but in, in terms of an overall perspective, it's definitely way better to drop it in, in another lane to secure the first tower. Here, this crank, uh, a little bit too aggressive, I condemn him into the wall, I sense my opportunity here, I ult and go in. I flash over, but somehow I managed to not kill the Blitzcrank. I have no idea how he tanked my damage for so long. I, I did see like a heal. I guess it was the fun of life heal because there's no other healing involved there and you know the rest of my team just die as well so that's uh, just really unfortunate. I thought we got a pick on the Blitzcrank. Like, the Condemn into the wall chain with the bubble. Um, just He was CC'd for so long and I had so much time to free hit on him. I thought that was a guaranteed kill but it wasn't and I even flashed over the Corky's Gatling gun to just prevent myself from getting shredded but I do end up just dying to them instead. Uh, Blitzcrank's uh, CC, his knockup, you know, just came up and I get knocked up and I just die, which is very, very unfortunate. So I'm 0, 2, and 1. At least Blitzcrank does die eventually, which there really is no way he doesn't die here. But I just thought I could get the kill and possibly get out, or at least get the kill, because getting a kill on Vayne in the early game is huge. Like, if you trade 1 for 1 on Vayne, I do think it's alright, because I do believe that Vayne skills better than basically every other like AD carry. Corky does scale very well as well, to be fair, but I do think Vayne is probably the best scaling AD carry in the entire game. So I would be willing to trade one for one. Unfortunately, I don't end up trading one for one. So here, uh, Blitzcrank hooks me in again, sets a trap for me. I just condemn him away. Thankfully, there's no fallout from his team at all, so it really amounts to nothing. Enemy team secures the Ocean Drake again, and, you know, I... Uh, we're in a fight again. I don't manage to secure the kill and I manage to die again. So I yet again don't manage to trade one for one. Like, like I said, if we trade one for one in in the early fights, it is fine. Uh, nice pick by the Ari, but unfortunately Irelia, not Irelia, Akali manages to hit the, the shuriken over the wall. And uh, Trindamir uh, actually manages to secure the first tower. So there is a silver lining here. Garen just point and click ult ultimates the Riven and Riven actually could have outplayed that. I do see her like if Garen comes in and she knocks him up, stuns him into the tower. I do see Riven actually picking up that kill. Unfortunately, Garen, you know, executes with his ultimate and no nothing can really do about that. So yeah. Now here is the point where I'm 0, 3, and 3. We all knew we would get to this point. I'm level 9 right like 9 minutes into the game. I don't have a single kill at 9 minutes into the game. So things are really looking bad for my team. That's why it's a horrible early game. It's a fed Akali. Everything just going wrong thus far. 
So we're gonna have to see how we get back into the game. Of course we are a vein who will scale pretty well. So that is definitely part of the process. If I was like a Lucian or something at this point, pretty much the game is just over. So here, there's three people. I'm telling Nami to back off. I can see Shivana coming down as well. So I'm just saying back off. We just give them the tower. We don't want to trade anything. We don't want to trade our lives for the tower. So here, we, I actually managed to escape. Uh, here, I'm actually going onto the Garen. I get hooked again by the Blitzcrank. I have to flash out. Here, I'm just trying to kite the best I can. I Zhonyas, because I actually did pick that up. Just now, Ari with a very nice charm, I get my damage onto the Blitzcrank. I'm changing targets to the Corky, who is obviously priority. Blitzcrank hooks me again, but in my opinion that was bad because it just helps me gap close onto him. Riven, regardless, cleans up the rest of the fight. Akali comes in 1v5 and manages to kill me with her ultimate. I did not see that coming, so uh, I pick up two kills but die yet again. Riven picks up a triple kill. And Riven, honestly, at this point in the game, is kind of carrying us. She's 8, 4, and 1. Actually goes for Triforce instead of going for the uh, uh, Black Cleaver, which is a more common build for Riven. And there is, um, honestly, some dissension amongst our team. Because, honestly, the jungle uh, guy, who is this guy, Yasuo is his name, wanted to pick Riven. But our top laner, who was first picked, Nom Nom, actually insta loved the Riven. And there was, like, infighting. And eventually, um, the Yasuo picked Trindamir, And eventually, she... Uh, traded with the top laner so the top laner actually gave in to the jungler and gave over the Riven. Um, Riven at this point is kind of carrying. Here it was really unlucky the angle of the Garen was so unlucky like I expected to hit him into the wall there and I thought I could pick up a kill on the Garen unfortunately yet again the condemn angle was just simply wrong so it was just uh, it just didn't go according to plan yet again it's kind of a theme in this particular game and things don't go according to plan. So here I've actually, you know, I've rushed the, the, the Merc Treads and the Zhonyas just to defend against the Akali. Here she comes again. So with the Merc Treads, a little bit more magic defense. With the Zhonyas, at least I can, you know, Zhonyas when she comes in on me. Really crucial when fighting against a Fed Akali is to rush your Zhonyas. Sort of like how when you're fighting against a Fed Zed or a Fed Fizz, you need to rush the Zhonyas just in case you get, you know, altered, destroyed, uh, so on and so forth. You need to rush the Zhonyas. And at this point, I picked up my Wits End as well. So even more magic defense against the Akali. Now I think this itemization is crucial against their team because Akali is fed. Uh, Corky himself isn't doing too bad. He's 1, 2, and 7, but he has a lot of assists, so he will be doing a ton of damage as well. Now, the whole team decides to go top for some reason. Dragon is spawning, but the enemy team is top as well. My team is top as well. I have no idea what's going on. So in the meantime, I'm just pushing out the mid lane, uh, at least equalizing the waves. There's a huge wave in the bot lane, so I'm actually, I actually want to hit over to push out the bot lane before I actually go for the dragon fight if at all possible. So here I'm just trying to get uh, as much farm as I can. Uh, you know, if you're behind, you sort of just want to farm uh, minions if possible because they give you guaranteed goal here. My team is actually kind of winning. Akali is dead, so I do see potential in this fight turning our direction. Riven is still in the fight and she's fed. I ult in, push the Garen away from my team so he can uh, ult the team. That was not a mistake, that was intentional. Blitzcrank hooks me over the wall and actually saves Corky's life for the moment. Um, now I'm gonna finish off the Corky. But Krang dodges the charm and lives with a uh, you know, sliver of HP. Riven is on the dragon and we're gonna actually pick up this dragon which is um, the Cloud Dragon. Cloud Dragon is actually really crucial uh, and I'm actually changing my thoughts. I actually think Cloud Dragon may be the best dragon just because the movement speed does so much for so many characters. Like with that mov movement speed, Trindamir can run people down, Riven can run people down, I can kite better and I can run away better, I can run people down better as well. So, uh, you know, pretty huge um, value on the Cloud Dragon, if if I'm honest here. And it also robs Garen of the Cloud Dragon, so he can run us down. So, really, I think Cloud Dragon is pretty valuable. Here, unfortunately, my minion wave doesn't crash. I try to tank the tower to finish up the enemy's tower. I realize it's not going to work. Blitzcrank turns up as well at the same time. I realize it's, yeah, it's just not going to work out, so I just back... Off. I see Akali roaming down. I see uh, Shivana roaming down as well. I, I condemn Shivana away. I ult for the uh, and, and as well as flash away. Here, uh, my team actually shows up. Actually, I don't ult yet. I ult here. But I, I just I wanted to hold on to my ult because I did expect to die there. Thankfully, I somehow survived. My team actually rotates over and we're actually turning the fight. I lifesteal off the crux a little bit and Riven picks up yet another kill. Now here I'm gonna push out the bot lane and at this point I'm 4, 4, and 7 definitely you know looking way better than what it was previously. My team is actually um, doing well on the fight there as well. I push out the minion wave so we can actually push this tower. 
So here warding, pretty good ward spot there in the enemy jungle. Now here we're gonna just pick up the tower. And then mid also has a wave, so we're gonna rotate mid and try to pick up the mid tower as well, if at all possible. Corky comes over to actually defend the mid tower, but we're all rotating. Uh, Akali shows up, so we don't want to push our luck here, so we just leave it at that. Meanwhile, Trindamir is still split pushing as well, so we're already pushing all three lanes at this point in time. We're pushing our, our advantage. At this point, we actually have a goal lead on the enemy team. The game has kind of swung uh, on our favor after you know picking, uh, having a couple of good team fights, and you know just. In general, just having a, a few good team fights as well as a couple of towers. Here, I actually was considering taking red buff, but considering how Raven is more fat than me and she's kind of carrying us, I don't even try to take the red buff. Of course, as an AD carry, if your jungler is doing better, just give the jungler the red buff. I always say how junglers should give AD carries the red buff, especially when they're fat. The opposite is also true. If you're an AD carry and your jungler is fat, just give the buff to the jungler. Don't rob your, your fat jungler of the buff. So here is a huge Baron fight. Here I'm going in, just staying in the back line, just hitting whoever I can really. Now at this point in time, the Baron's really low, trying to get the kill. I get the kill uh, onto the Shivana so they don't have a smite. I actually tried to secure the Baron, but Akali's ultimate does actually manage to secure the Baron. Fortunately, I killed the Akali after that. Um, Corky kind of overextends there because he was he thought I was focusing Garen. I was, but I switched targets to the Corky, and you know I get the quadra kill onto the Garen. And here, enemy team actually does manage to pick up the, the Baron with the Akali ultimate. But I managed to ace the enemy team with a quadra kill. So um, the Baron is pretty much negated because they don't actually have a Baron. Because all the Baron buffs were removed since the enemy team was aced. Here, just picking up some honey fruit, getting my health back. And I'm just going to head over down to the bomb lane. Just push out that bomb lane. Or rather, I, should, I shouldn't say push out. I should just say take the, all the farm. At this point in time, I have picked up my... Uh, Solari charge blade as well, so I'm doing uh, pretty well in terms of the in the iron department. So I will be able to uh, actually not. I will be able to. I have already come online and I have already picked up a quadra kill coming up big from my team here with all that gold from the quadra kill. I can get my phantom dancer straight up. I don't really value the Infinity Edge as much. I just think the attack speed is more important in general because all my damage, not all my damage, majority of my damage comes from parking the silver boats. So I do pick up the. Uh, the uh, Phantom Dancer instead. I'm actually going to go for Infinity Edge as my last item, not the uh, um, Garden Angel most likely. But of course, both built out of the uh, BF Sword, so I'm I will be building that first. Here, um, uh, Shivana overextends. I condemn her into the wall. I am in the front line, so I'm just kiting back so I don't end up tanking all the enemy team's damage. In the meantime, there's a 1v1 in the top lane between Akali and Trindamir. Uh, as Trindamir is trying to push, Trindamir dies unfortunately. But we're gonna rotate over to the Elder Dragon because the entire enemy team is in the top lane slash top side jungle. So we have a small window of opportunity where we can actually secure the Elder Dragon before the enemy team comes. Now I'm not so confident how fast we can burst it down though. Uh, it would be good if Trindamir was still around here to burst it with us. But the enemy team actually shows up. I condemn Garen to the wall. I try to kite away from the enemy team. Corky steals the Elder Dragon unfortunately, but I do pick up the kill. I'm tanking the entire enemy team, I barrier, I Zhonyas, and I managed to survive with a sliver of HP. And at this point in time, enemy team picked up the Elder Dragon, but same story as the Baron, they get aced. So we we have a 4 is to 1 trade. Should te technically, Trindamir died before the fight, so technically there, we d uh, clean aced them. So here we can just pick up the game, Elder Dragon doesn't matter anymore. We pick up the game, and there is the comeback completed. So that is the end of the video and that's how we came back from a horrible early game and a fed Akali. So as usual, I'll leave you guys with the stats. So thank you guys for watching the video and goodbye.